to sand or not to sand? That's a question I get all the time. And especially if I sand my base coats. So in this video, I will go through why and when I sand and when I don't. But before we grab our sandpapers and start to rub away, we need to understand why we sand. And there are basically two reasons why we sand. To get a nice flat surface and to get good adhesion for the next layer of paint. But if I want a nice flat surface and good adhesion for the next layer, why not sand every coat? Well, let's dive deeper. Paint can adhere to or bond to a, a, a surface either mechanically or chemically. And to understand this, we need to understand the products that we're using. In my case, I normally use a solvent-based automotive paint. And the paint can be divided into three types. We got the primers and fillers, we got the base coats, aka the colors, and we got the clear coat or top coat. These paints are either one component, 1K, or two component, 2K. A 1K paint usually consists of a single can or aerosol of paint. And if you use a can, you usually have to dilute it with a reducer while the, uh, while the aerosol is ready to pre-mixed and ready to go. A 1K paint dries very fast as the solvents uh, vaporize, usually within an hour. What's left is the dry paint. And if you add, and if you add reducer to it, it will simply solve the paint again. So. Well, do this, it simply wipes off. Hence, it's poorly protected and not a finished surface. A 2K paint consists of two parts. We got the paint itself and we got a hardener, also called an activator or a catalyst, and you mix it with the paint. In an aerosol, it's usually a cart cartridge underneath that you use this uh, knob to push in there and activate it like that. The 2K paints also contain solvents to make them flow better. However, once the two components have been mixed, you can't solve them by adding a reducer. So if we take this pipe here, for example, this one has been sprayed with a 2K clear coat and I spray some thinner onto it and I try to rub it away with this. Nothing happens to it. It's, it's completely, it's rock solid, okay? So, so it's simply an irreversible process where the two components react chemically and create new materials that are not uh, possible to solve with the solvents, opposed to the 1K components, which is simply paint in a dry or wet condition. The 2K components are usually used for the primer and uh, body filler work, like this epoxy, epoxy primer, and in the clear coat and top coats like these this clear coat over here, while well, the 1K paints is used for the base coat. So we have a first layer of primer that sort of seals off the, the substrate and protects it from, from rust and oxidation and, and, and so on. Uh, we got some 1K paint and maybe another layer of 1K paint for, for graphics and, and logos and stuff like that. And then we sort of capsule it in with a 2K clear coat that also gives it a beautiful finish, either glossy or, or matte. And yes, there are 2K base coats as well, commonly referred to as single stage paint as you don't need a clear coat to, on top of them. But for custom painting, it's not very common. And let's just focus on this setup right here. So why is this important for sanding? Well, let's start from the bottom. We lay down a 2K primer. During the first hours, the solvents will evaporate but the paint has not hardened properly yet. That will take usually up to 24 hours in room temperature. During this time, the paint will be softer and it will be affected if you add a reducer to it. Hence, you don't need to sand if you spray a 1K base coat on top of a wet primer. Uh, it will simply chemically bond very nice to it and there is absolutely no need to sand it during this time. But if you don't have time to spray your base coat directly after your primer, or if it lays down very uneven or with orange peel and it doesn't look very good, you don't want to spray the, the base coat directly. So you let it harden for 24 hours and then you can send it. And by the way, the time slots that I'm mentioning here, they are only examples. You should always consult the technical data sheet for the products that you're using. So by sanding the paint, you remove any uneven surfaces and you make it perfectly smooth. You also provided with tiny scratches that the 1K paint can adhere to, but in a mechanical way instead of chemically. Once the 1K paint is laid down, we ask ourselves again, do I have to sand? No, you don't. Why? Well, if you paid attention so far, you know that the 1K paint 
can be solved by adding a reducer, which the 2K clear code contains. So if you spray new paint on it that contains solvents, it, the very top layer of the base coat will react with the solvents and it will bond with the new paint. So even if the base paint has been drying for weeks, it will still be dissolved and bond with a new paint. So unless you get an ugly run, in which case you should sand it out the spot and recoat it, it's not advisable to sand base coat at all. This is because the base paint is very thin and you run the risk of going through it into the primer. And if it's a metallic, you will damage the metal flakes in the metallic. But most of all, it's not necessary. Don't waste your time. Our base coat has laid down nice and smooth and it's time for the clear coat. It's common practice to lay down a 2K clear coat in two sessions. So you begin with two to three coats of clear coat with about five to 10 minutes of flash time in between. And then you're done with the first session. Now we need to paint to cure properly so we don't trap solvents underneath the new paint that we, or the new clear coat that we put on. So let it cure for at least two to three days, maybe even more if you live in a, in a cold environment. Again, check out your technical data sheet. Since the solvents vapor out and the clear coat hardens during the cure, the new layer of clear coat won't adhere chemically. Hence, you need to sand it before you lay down your next session. Both to level out any imperfections in the paint, but most of all to give the new layer of clear coat or the second layer of clear coat a good mechanical adhesion. So sand it with 800 grit sandpaper, uh, wash it thoroughly, and then you lay down two to three new coats with a flash time in between. So there you have it, when to sand and when not to. And if you find this video interesting, give it a good thumbs up. And if you wanna see me paint a full bike paint job, check out this video over here. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next DIY bike project. Cheers.